Hello, welcome to another episode of Relay Station. How is everyone doing? We are joined this week by the Reverend, the gorgeous, the amazing Space Pope. He is the popiest, spaciest popist we have here at Relay. Nakara. Hello. How's everyone doing today? I'm good. In addition, we have the amazing, the famous, the inventor of the Typad, Nitro Typad from the base.sc. Hello, everybody. And, okay. and you may know him from pretty much everywhere. He is the sensational, the famous fast cars of the fast cart clan. What, you're not going to take the diplomatic? No, that was last night. Don't, you don't talk about that. All right. <laughs> what happens on Friday yeah, stays on definitely. Fridays. So, um, how how are we all? How is everyone? I'm bit, pretty great. There was Star Citizen stuff this week. I'm a bit hungry. I'm pretty great. I'm looking okay. forward to Pax East next week. Oh, Ooh, next Pax week, East, really? Yep. Wow. It's been, has it, it's, is it been, hmm, okay. Do we know if um, there'll be a CIG presence there in any way, shape, or form? The community managers will be at the Bar Citizen on Saturday. Uh, and they're, and really will be there, so that sort of is default CIG presence. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. It confirms um, so the relay is a part of CIG. <laughs> Uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> he literally just so, did that. <laughs> we've had um, we've had a fair bit of news come in this week, haven't we, Nagara? Mostly from ATV. Absolutely, we did. Uh, it was mostly ATV, so maybe I'll mention the non-ATV news first to get it out of the way. Um. CIG was at GDC all week. Um, they were at the Amazon Lumberyard booth, uh, showing off people their game and um, generally indoctrinating and uh, addicting a whole new class of citizens. <laughs> um, Friday, we got the newsletter and the schedule report update. Um, the newsletter was mostly nondescript. Uh, there was a mention there that there's a Hornet wildfire sale for subscribers this weekend. And um, But the real news was that the schedule report was out. Um, the opening of the Evocati window for 2.6.2 is March 10th. The opening of the PTU window is March 15th, and the expected release date is March 23rd. Obviously, all still, you know, subject to change, but it's a very aggressive release schedule. It also means that hopefully somewhere around the first week of April, we'll actually have uh, a new production um, schedule report for whatever the next big patch is, be it 2.7 or 3.0. Um, Six, that's my bet. It's six? Okay. Yeah. Patch we're just six. Going, we're just going straight totally to patch mess six. Everyone. Six yeah. point oh, right there. Yeah. Um, now, there are a few actual notable features in 2.6.2. Probably the most notable for everyone is the multiplayer mega map, which will massively reduce load times between multiplayer games and getting into multiplayer. Um, also, pretty big deal for a lot of people is that uh, CIG is introducing non 21 by 9, or sorry, non 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio support for monitors. So um, anyone out there with a 21 by 9 monitor or any other aspect ratio will actually have a, a Star Citizen supported now. Yes. <clears throat> Shiver is happy. But so happy. So happy. <laughs> The other most notable features are some improvements to networking, which they've been working on uh, since uh, before 2.0. Uh, well, this is part of the stuff that they've been working on for networking right back to 2.6. And also um, some new ship weapons, as well as a whole raft of additional bug fixes in polish. Although I must say 2.6.1 is pretty stable and polished as it currently stands as well. 
Um, then on to around the verse. I am not going to go into the incredible granular detail that I have recently with the news because everybody here has probably watched ATV. However, uh, Tony Zervek is currently in LA. He is helping with gameplay mechanics and uh, working on solar system services such as missions, shopping, and procedural planet commodities. Uh, first thing to come online here will be the shopping service. Um, this is really cool. It basically, on a solar system level, controls the inventory prices and demand levels for all the shops. And it also hooks up to the mission service so that the mission service will issue missions whenever um, a shop needs to be resupplied or I would imagine in the future it gets attacked or anything like that. Um, so what you're saying is when, when the mission comes up to collect 10 rats, we'll be able to collect 10 rats and, and deliver them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it, it's just not 10 rats. It ten, it's 10 rats bleens. Ah, right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this, uh, this actually is something that they didn't mention, but I thought should be noted for people. So this system will constantly be generating missions to basically resupply all the shops in, in the game. Um, but uh, a lot... All of the missions in the game can also be carried out by NPCs. So a lot of the transport missions, for example, will be done by NPC cargo pilots. Um, however, you know, obviously players can also pick up any of those missions. But there won't just be like 10 million missions with no prospect of ever actually having those things completed. If a player doesn't pick it up, an NPC will. <clears throat> Do we... Well... Do you think they'll have the uh, ratio of AI to players that the target is on 3.0 launch? I.e., mm. is it 10 to 1? 10 to 1, yeah. to 1. 10 to 1. It's 10 to 1. Um, will they have it on 3.0 launch? I have no idea because they haven't really talked about that. They're, they basically that. have said they, they basically said we will have NPCs in 3.0. They have not really gone into any detail about what they'll be doing. Um, so it's very possible that that part of this system, where NPCs do all this stuff as well, will not be functional yet. But that is the long-term mm. goal. Yeah, I, um, mean, I that, think it would be... F- Go on, Fosca. I, I imagine that would be closer to 4.0, like when Dark Citizen that first movie later. Yeah, possibly. I could see basic implementation... Uh, AI attached only to crew stations and only able to stay on those crew stations. Like a pilot can only stay in the pilot seat. Uh, the engineer can only stay at the engineering panel. And then with 4.0, we'll say is like the a- aim area for full release of subsumption. Then you'll see them wandering around the ship, moving around and changing jobs, maybe. Uh, and that we still have yet. We don't, like we don't really know the status of the like fully independent NPCs, um, like the universe simulation, right? Uh, we don't know where that's at. We haven't heard about it for a long time, um, because as people will probably recall, NPCs in Star Citizen are supposed to have their entire own existence. Um, even if you never ever see that NPC, it's supposed to have its whole life story. And it all does, and it does things on its own out in the verse as well. Now, where that's at, we really don't know. We haven't heard in a long time. Um, they were working with Wormbite on that, which is uh, a um, an outsourcer. Um, so moving along from there, uh, Frankfurt has created a real time subsumption visualizer. Uh, this will drastically decrease or increase the speed at which they can. Uh, the designers can program the AI to their needs. So basically, they can see in real time in the game um, changes to the AI as they make them. I kind of wish they had showed that. Um, that would have been really cool. Yeah, because like they showed the the system for engine shields and weapons. Uh, I think it was last week. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. it was a very simple visualizer, but I wish we could have seen this assumption one. That way we could be like, oh, cool. <laughs> They seem to have hold off, held off showing a lot of the AI stuff. I think they want it to kind of blow us away when it comes out. Um, so the I mean, studio... The, 
the idea for the AI would be look at something like Skyrim with the AI there. They're meant to have an entire life cycle of their own. Wake up, go to the shop, go to sleep. That's the most basic form of simulating uh, an, an agenda for a character. And even that is buggy as hell in a Bethesda game. So just something that basic, getting that right is quite difficult. Subsumption with its many uh, tasks and subtasks and sub-activities to the subtasks is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um, I would like to mention, I mean, Skyrim did it sort of, I wouldn't say first, but they, I think maybe first on a mass, like a massive game level. Um, Didn't Oblivion a lot of people, do it as well, though? Uh, I don't think Oblivion had very much of it. I mean, um, however, I just wanted to mention that if you wanted to see a really good example of it being implemented, that would be uh, Witcher 3 um, mm. by CD Projekt Red. The Witcher 3 has, it feels like a living world. The people actually look like they are doing important things instead of just wander, wandering around aimlessly. I mean, to be completely fair, this AI in these games that we're mentioning, are they're all run on your local machine, you know, all these tasks are CPU intensive and whatnot, whereas in Star Citizen, that's all going to be on the server. That's all server yep. load. So I, I don't And not know. only that, they will have a whole cluster of servers that is specifically dedicated to that task. That's right. the universe simulator, right? It's right. going to be above the rest of the universe, and it will run everything from the background. Um, I would love to be part so. of the, um, the stress test for that. Like, oh, yeah. Can you imagine getting a whole bunch of as many um, like players as you can just to get that ten to one ratio and see, see how far we can push the server? Yeah, it, it kind of just reminds me of like some movie where you know the AI goes rogue and they have to go shut it down. They go into the room and there's just one server sitting in the middle, <laughs> and it's like just plugged in all all the other servers, and you're like, it that one's the heart, you know, that one's the one that runs <laughs> all the all the universe simulation. So. All right. What else um, caught your so, eye, Nakara, this week? Uh, the uh, studio updates, uh, I did want to mention this. The studio updates that we saw this week and last week um, are their new format going forward. The basic idea of it is to have a uh, video version of the monthly report. So they'll be mm. showing a lot more of their work from each studio. Oh, that's cool. The, they'll be more detailed and longer. I'm a, I'm a more visual learner, so that's actually really nice to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was really cool, too. And, the, I mean, the Frankfurt update this week was spectacular. Yeah. Um, there are up to 67 staff that there now. Um, we got to see some amazing, amazing stuff from the, uh, the procedural planets. Um, mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, like, we got a couple of weeks ago, they put some images in the vault for Daymar. By the time ATV rolled around this week, it already looked a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two weeks difference. Um, it's kind of amazing how, how fast they're able to iterate and improve on, on everything. So the first thing they kind of showed was um, they showed off um, some of the tech that they've been working on. So this was, um, you could definitely tell there's improved ground scatter. And uh, also atmospherics. Um, they showed from orbit how the uh, clouds look a lot better. So they moved the sun around and you could see the cloud layers. I love when they do that. Um, the thing that was really cool was you could actually see the changing shadows and like light reflections on the ground mm -hmm. um, as they were moving the sun around, like from orbit. It's amazing. Um, I can't wait to be like in orbit around a planet and see a battle going on down on the surface. <laughs> Or vice versa. So cool. Or vice versa, yeah. See ships blowing up in the atmosphere. Um, it'd be really neat to sit on the ground and watch like a dog fight through the atmosphere. You know, watch think even bigger around. than that. Think a big fleet battle in orbit while you've got a load of dragonflies and Earth to combat on the uh, planet. That would be awesome at the same time. I, I would be had... absolutely stunned if they are not going to utilize that opportunity in Squadron Forty Two. I just had an idea, like, maybe for Operation Pitchfork, we could be trying to defend a planet from the Van Duel. And crazy. people on on planet can see the battle from, from, from the surface. I think we'll be taking back planets from the Van Duel. <laughs> well, 
I'm, yes. I'm not sure. It depends on how they want to storytell it. Like, do, yeah. you, do you want the band to win or do you want the, the um, band to lose? I'm not sure which way to go on that one. I think they have to allow, at least allow for the possibility that the players win. Yeah, allow for it, but which one I do mean, they... it should be it should be unimaginably difficult, but I think they should at least allow for the possibility of the players winning. Um, and there, you, the, you there's don't believe in Kobayashi Maru? Um, <laughs> I get that reference. Thank yes, but, but Kirk beat it, so it was it, he was he cheated. No, so he still won. <laughs> Are you condoning cheating then? No, yeah, not game. Just saying he won. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, now. So one of the things I also wanted to mention is there's sort of this long. Um, this thing that I, I uh, kind of wondered about for a long time, they talked this week about um, upgradable and uh, modular ship weapons, uh, which is something we kind of really hadn't heard much or anything about. We knew that FPS weapons would be modular, um, but uh, I always kind of wondered about that because it seemed kind of odd given the modularity of the entire Star Citizen, like everything, that uh, ship weapons wouldn't also be. But uh, they now are, or they're developing the pipeline to make them modular. How, when you say they're modular now, do you mean we'll be able to take a stock, a barrel off, or we'll be able to take components of the gun off, like um, rather than a barrel, just uh, a part of the inner working mechanisms, oh, rather than a visual change? Be interesting. I think, I think each, um, I think each weapon will have specific things that can be changed on it. Um, so maybe like adding an extra l- extra large magazine or for, for a ballistic weapon. Um, maybe adding another barrel. I don't know. Well, I'm mean, not really sure. They actually but, showed uh, a bit of that this week. They this showed a little like... bit of the from Knightsbridge Arms, yeah. Oh, no, no. I mean, um, they when they were showing off the armor stuff in the, in the slot mechanism, they actually had yeah. the ballistic assault rifle and they changed not only the barrel, but they added a stability handle underneath the front of the barrel that you could grab onto mm-hmm. with the other hand. Yeah, we've known about that aspect of FPS weapons for a long time. Mm-hmm. It's been talked about since the beginning. But for ship weapons, they kind of haven't really mentioned anything. So I'm glad that they are uh, actually going down that road. Because it'll create a lot more, like a huge amount more uh, variety and flexibility for ship weapons. Ship loadouts in as well. Yeah, exactly. And then you also add in the tuning system, and you get like, like infinite combinations. Yeah, overclocking. It yep. makes so many special snowflake ships. <laughs> <laughs> um, they did mention the that they're working will on be the particles as well. Yes, they will be particles. Uh, we mentioned this a couple times before. They, they were, um, we, we have addressed it before, and they've addressed it again. Uh, the particle system is now implemented. They can, uh, it's a brand new system. They can use it now to create planets. And uh, essentially what it does, it's a brand new particle system that allows them to attach particles to areas or to specific items. Um, so, for example, you wander onto a mountaintop. It might be snowing. Um, or you might walk past a tree and it's dropping leaves down. Or past a rock that's blowing dust off the top of it. Um, any of these type of things. But that the ability to attach particles to objects like that will make the whole world feel way more alive. We were discussing the other day as well the possibility of uh, seasons as well. Oh yeah, because I, it, I it is essentially the tech behind it. <laughs> I I there still is. think it's possible. Yeah, all jokes aside, I'm calling it now. I'm going yeah. for season. I don't think it's it possible yet. Likely, I don't believe so. I'm, well, I'm saying, I'm, I said it's going to be seasons. I, I'll put it this way. At launch, I don't think so. It is, they have the underlying tech to do it, but creating dynamic se- seasons is a very big technical task. And, I mean, a lot of seasons are, you know, not only temperature and, and like, weather dependent, but also, uh, like, foliage stuff. But that happens on a yeah, much slower pace. Um, so... I mean, it could be almost like a day-night cycle. I mean, granted, their day-night cycle is simpler than 
uh, you know, just having the the uh, sun move or the uh, like most games that have just the sun move around the map. This one is literally <laughs> yeah. the planet turns and the sun stays in in place, and it, it's kind of mind blowing once you think about it. But because seasons happen like with Earth, you know, because the Earth is tilted a little bit, you know, we have the seasons as it revolves around the sun. Uh, like we said last night, a lot of planets might not have seasons. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them might just be like freezing on one side and really hot on the other and kind of just revolves around. Or if we have like an Earth-like planet, we could maybe have seasons because it's a very gradual change rather than an abrupt one. So, mm -hmm. Well, they want to certainly I don't want to piss on your chips or anything, but Earth is in the game. <laughs> I would be interested in seeing like a... Five landing a zones? Sorry, Four. fast cut. I would like to see a planet that's have tidally locked to their star, so mm. it, it, they, have, they only have the temperate zone around that the day the day night scene. I think that'd be interesting to see. I would I would really like for them to to have that kind of variety in planets. Um, it's not that difficult to do, and uh, it would be really cool. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, I actually believe they will. They've spent a we've heard about many many times. They've brought in consultants. Um, to basically go through their star map and tell them what is realistic and what isn't um, and help them refine things to make it not ridiculous, essentially, you know. Um, so I do expect that we'll probably see a pretty good variety of different uh, types of planets in different situations. Um, one of the things I, you know... <laughs> It's just brought to mind. One of the things that they had said early on they weren't going to do is uh, different um, different gravity levels just for gameplay mm. reasons. It would be too difficult. But then, mm. like a few months ago, they said they would do it, um, which kind of surprised me because you have to change all the animations. Um, but mm. maybe maybe they've way to maybe they found a way to procedurally do that. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to that too, like landing on some tiny moon and be, like hopping around. Yeah, they could probably change the speed of, like, the animation um, because, you know, gravity, it would just speed you up slower. So as you're falling, you know, they kind of just have you fall. Or I mean, this more like the animation, you know, the falling animation, you're kind of just floating in midair or whatever for a few seconds. So I, I think I've seen games do it before where they just play with the speed of the animation rather than retooling it or anything. Yeah, <laughs> From a technical standpoint as well, as the the way they've set up the planets as well, it wouldn't be too difficult for them to be able to say that the planet is a different gravity zone to, right. you know, it's standard. Yeah, agreed. Um, so, one of the things I'd actually love to see for that is is if you land, if you try and land on like a high gravity planet and you just die mm. oh, can you imagine <laughs> can, Hulk crushed can you imagine if oh and this is this is like really like out there but if they took the size and mass of the planet into account when calculating gravity so like rather than gravity being a, a, a decimal that they just like oh this gravity seems right for this planet like the game's just like oh well the planet's this big and this is its mass so this is what the gravity is for it and so, like, every planet well, you go could. to... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but every planet you go to, you kind of just have that slightly different feel. So it's like, oh, man, my jump is, like, half a second slower on this planet. Um, and it, it'd be almost like going to a different planet in real life, because you're like, okay, I can definitely feel something's different. That's weird. Um, something I want to point out is that I don't know if it's a secret or... A dog. I don't think it's a secret, but there's a black hole in in, in the lore. I think you, you can find it on a star map. So I'd be interested in seeing it on. But then that, if you, you die, if you get too close to it or something like that. I would imagine so. And I'm really excited to visit that. Um, I don't think it's a secret. It's It's been in what I think it was one of the uh, stretch goal systems. Um, <clears throat> but uh, no, I definitely want to see that in person and maybe get crushed by it. <laughs> Confirmed. Um, do you want to be crushed by a black hole? <laughs> it's on my bucket list. <laughs> yeah. It'll be the last thing you do. 
Ow. So we actually got a little bit of news that it's Squadron 42. I mean, it's, it's like squeezing blood from a stone, but we got a little bit of news about Squadron. Um, and that they had completed the uh, the AI work, basically a 24-hour uh, life cycle for uh, one of the main characters. And then they were using that sort of whole cycle to model all the other characters after. Um, you know, just them going about their daily lives. Hmm. It would be um, like the the typical UAE Navy archetype. So he he gets up, he goes for his morning uh, breakfast or whatever, and then he does his duties. So that would be the standard template. Then if they're, one of the guys is a chef, instead of going down to the hangar to fly a ship, he goes into the galley and makes uh, you know heats a can of baked beans for the lot or something. One can for the whole. The whole one group. can. Well, I mean, but, it's, it's optional. UE is really tight. One bean per eating, crew member. Eating is optional, even for NPCs. <laughs> yeah. They just get a buff oh. from it. So, um, the other thing they've been working on that it's going to be, going to make, I don't know, I think it's going to make the game feel a lot better, um, especially in single player, is uh, they've been working to allow players and AI to use the same item at the same time, uh, for example, a table. Um, but then on top of that, they've also been working to allow AI to use other usables inside that usable. So, for example, you can the AI can use cups and knives and forks, for example, inside I heard you like usables. Uh, while they're... Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard you like usables. And uh, so they can... I mean, that's, that's the mundane stuff. The real important thing for gameplay is that AI will be able to run over to a locker, open it up, and grab a gun and start using it. Um, that's See, going to be cool. Nicole, I was going to use that as one of my um, trivia questions for postcard, but now I can't because you said it. <laughs> <laughs> this may be on the test. <laughs> so, I should just say everything and then you make your life really difficult. <laughs> Oh wow! Des um, Marius sent a really cool GIF in the chat of uh, yeah. the different um, velocities you need to have in order to leave the gravity of the planets in our solar system. And oh wow! I'm I'm kind of just looking at it, and Jupiter takes uh, almost one point five or uh, one hundred and fifty thousand miles per hour in order to leave its atmosphere. That's really fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be really cool if there's. You'd like need a, a red rocket for that one. Yeah. <laughs> and racing stripes and speed holes, the whole shebang. I could imagine like a giant planet or even maybe a uh, black hole just pulling you in and you just have to quantum drive out of it or something like that. That'd be really cool. That'd be cool. That would, would be really cool. Or they, or they can make it that the black hole to shut the engine or the drive somehow, but I don't think they would do that. Hmm. Thank you, Des. So, um, Nakara, there was something the level design team were polishing up <laughs> that caught your attention. Yeah, and I, I could be off on this, but I, I thought it was really interesting. Um, the level design team is polishing three service outposts for the initial release sort of basically 3.0 for the initial release of uh, procedural planets those three service outposts are hydroponics mining and storage and each of those is config reconfigurable in a bunch of different ways internally and externally so you can you know make the modular stick them together now um the thing that i thought was really interesting is we now know that cargo and mining are both in 3.0 Obviously, the mining service outpost is a mining service outpost. The storage one relates to cargo. However, hydroponics relates to farming, uh, which isn't in 3.0 as far as we know, but I think there's a possibility that at least some features of it have been moved up. Um, so I'm very curious to see if that is in fact the case. I'm that much closer to being able to play Farming Simulator 2947. Right. <laughs> Are you excited? That's why we're all getting a HOTAS. Yep. <laughs> HOTAS? I got one of those, like, tractor steering wheel things that sits on my desk. <laughs> Do they still make those? I, Do they I still make so. them now? Yeah, I, still, I believe so. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's that's sort of one of my theory crafting bits this week. I think farming may be moving up a little bit. 
it's the only piece of evidence I have at all. So I could be totally off base, but um, I did think that was an interesting note. If it if it doesn't come, we'll crop that out of the episode. Okay. <laughs> crop. Okay. So nope. I got. Nope. I wasn't. I wasn't right. justifying your pun though. Nope. All right. Fine. So um, they've also done a whole bunch more work on the planets. Uh, specifically, the engine team fixed a bunch of the uh, aliasing and shimmer artifacts in clouds. They also added some animations to clouds and also allowed them to be, or now allow them to be tinted different colors. So that should lead to very picturesque uh, sunsets and dawns and things. Yeah. And instead of Star Wars music, instead of Star Wars music, you'll have to start citizen music. <laughs> Staying longingly at the sun as a such. That's right. The uh, this one's really cool in my opinion. The first edition of the solar system editor is is almost complete. Um, this is basically the macro level of creating a star system. It's um, you place the star, you place planets, and you place them in their orbits around the star. Um, then you place the moons in orbit around the planets, probably also space stations. And it looks like other things as well, um, but it's sort of the the like large the high level setup for the entire star system, um, and uh, I thought that was really cool. Here's a question: Do you think they're putting in the Trappist system? The um, discovered system. I don't know how many of the Star Citizen systems are actually real, so probably not. But I think that all of these discoveries sort of feed into their ideas for how to make new systems. Unfortunately, we're a ways away from them actually making new systems, if you know what I mean. They already have 110. 110? That, that was going to be my next question. They, they, have like a, they have like 110, I believe, that they still need to make, so it's sort of... Uh, <laughs> we're a ways off from yeah, there. it'll be down the line. I mean, it'd be kind it'd be of... Down a, the line. A cheap way of doing it, but they, I could honestly see them like making a system that they are already planned uh, that was very similar to the Trappist system. Yeah, and, I was going to say, I mean, who, who to say that one, that one of the 110 can't come Trappist anyway? Yeah, but like yeah, instead sure. of like they don't even have to rename it, they're just like, oh yeah, it was named after the first guy that went there. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, I mean, because I mean, of... if this system's actually significant, it won't always be called Trappist One. Right, right. You know. Um, with 4.0, the target big feature there was uh, another system, right? Yes. Do you think that this uh, solar system editor is the first step to that end? Or do you think I this is say, I wouldn't say it's the first step. After? I, think it is, I think it is one of the steps. However, one of the things that I, that's really made me curious is a lot of the stuff they've shown for procedural planets is obviously none of the planets in Stanton. Hmm. Which I think means to me that they are working on a lot more planets than we actually give them credit for. Um, and I mean, even their even the Homestead demo was in Lear. Like, that's another star system. It's not completely made up. It's another system in the game. Um, so it's pretty... And we already know they've been working on Terra and Earth. And so... However, I think what this is really in aid of is they're sort of at the point where they're like, we need to do this faster. Um, and doing, trying to place a planet inside the engine, I think, is very difficult because of the scale is involved. So they needed to create a solar system editor, which is now, the first version at least, is now complete. So I think we'll start to see that work accelerate. Similarly with the work on the, uh, the visualizer for subsumption too. Same idea. Um, also, I, so this is the part of the show where I have to geek out again about the moons of Crusader. Uh, Selen looks incredible. Um, which is the ice moon they showed the guy running around. Very cool. One of the things that was pointed out in the subreddit was the character that was running around on his left hip, he had a personal arc welder. So it looks like the, the, uh, personal arc welder is now done. The, it um, is sort of a sorry. utility tool for aimed at repair. The uh, assault rifle on his back is also one that 
we have not seen, I don't think, in engine yet. Oh, wow. I did not notice that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely not the, the default assault rifle. Mm. Um, tell us about ship shape this week, because they went into a bit more detail on the hurricane. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> I really like the hurricane. It, its history especially is really interesting. Um, this was a ship that they basically went, uh, the Tavarin are causing us big problems. We need a ship that can fight back. Um, so they created the hurricane to basically attack the prowler, um, specifically it's back. And basically they wanted to create a ship that could penetrate the shields. Um, so the hurricane was created essentially to attach, uh, attack the prowler from behind and then get away before it could do anything about it. Um, it's basically an alpha strike ship. Yeah. Get in, fire all weapons, kill the thing, and get out before you get killed. Yep. I mean, honestly, the Hurricane is basically designed as a ship that should never actually get hit mm -hmm. if it's being used properly. Um, I mean, it's obviously going to, but that's the design is um, I fly in here, I kill you, and you don't have enough time to even respond <laughs> mm -hmm. before, <laughs> before you're dead. Um so originally the Hurricane was seen as a starter ship for Star Citizen uh, with a turret focus, but that has obviously changed a lot. Um, the, the its current its current state is that it is actually a pretty advanced ship. It, it's going to need a uh, skilled and um, skilled pilot and also a skilled gunner, because um, again, you're going to want to not get hit, and you also need to deal a lot of damage. On your strafing runs, so your turret, so, your uh, your turret gunner has to be able to hit. And can you explain? So from, um, go on, Pascal. Sorry. sorry, can you explain the size seven um, turret thing again? Because I I think that a lot of people glossed over that. Mm. Size seven turret? It the it it has a size seven slot, but it's really for four size three weapons. Yeah, it's a very unique turret. Set up. Now, I don't know if I can explain it because well, I, I just I just get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean, the turret itself is a, is a manned turret um, with four large weapons on it. If, in fact, the thing they mentioned is the hurricane. You know, the hurricane. Almost all of its weapons are on the turret. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's not a very powerful ship at all without the turret. Um. So having that really skilled gunner is going to be very important. I was going to say it's the perfect ship if you and a friend uh, want to get into a game and like you're a really good pilot but not so good at gunning. This is the perfect ship for you because it, it's aimed towards pilots, it's aimed towards turret gunners, and it's just a two man craft. So that that's something for the the smaller groups out there to enjoy. It almost feels like a, a less tanky version of what the Super Hornet w was supposed to feel like, almost. Yeah, and it kind of makes me yeah. worried about Super Hornet, too, because I kind of like the way it is. You can, you can, you can still load the Super Hornet, mm -hmm. but, I mean, with the way the Hurricane is, I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to revisit or change the way the Super Hornet works because of that. I, I kind of don't think so, because the Super Hornet kind of... It feels very different when you're actually flying it, because yeah. you're... Um, like, a Super Hornet can stand in and just take a hell of a beating and just sit there and fire back, and it'll win. <laughs> and the turret um, that the, the secondary pilot um, man or not mans, but controls, uh, isn't as powerful because it only has two weapons on it at the most. Yes. And, um, and the fact that it's kind of harder to aim because you don't move with the turret. You've got the option as well. Uh, I would imagine of if you want as a pilot to take all the guns for yourself and leave your co-pilot with um, radar yeah, duties or yeah. what have you. Yeah, yeah, you've got that as an option. Whereas mm -hmm. you, that's not an option in the um, hurricane at all. Well, you uh, will be able to. I, well, you, the, you, you, you will yeah, be able to save the turret. It. But the problem, but the, you'd be doing a yourself a disservice. Huge disservice. One of the biggest mm. advantages of the hurricane is that the. Is that it's um it's going to be very difficult to follow it to chase it because the turret gunner with four weapons can fire backwards. <laughs> um, 
that that's the problem with slaving the turret to the pilot. You won't be able to fire backwards because you have to one fly forwards. You, yeah, I don't know how you fly forwards and aim backwards at the same time. Well, <laughs> I've, I've done it. Well, it's like Babylon 5. You can like go forward and then turn off your... Um, oh, yeah, decouple. Oh, you around. spin, yeah, decouple. Yeah, spin spin, yeah, I've done that too. But uh, it's significantly more difficult than just having a turret gunner fire yes, behind exactly. you. <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, it's a really interesting ship. It has a very interesting history. Um, basically, Anvil Aerospace in the late 2800s revived the, the design because of the aggression from the Vandal. They realized that the Hurricane would actually be pretty effective against the Vandal, just like it was against the Tavarn. Um so it's actually a very old ship that was out of service for a long time and was revived. Anvil was not the original manufacturer of the ship. It was Cassie Aerospace. But the current version does have a pretty distinct Anvil look. It definitely combines the look of the uh, Hornet and the Gladiator. Didn't they literally do it by make, design it by literally doing that? Mm-hmm. Yep. It was a kit bash. And just the advantage... He, it's totally a kit bash. The entry system for the turret gunner for the Hurricane is like lifted right out of the uh, Gladiator. The pilot as well. Yeah. So, then we had the incredible behind-the-scenes section for character customization. Uh, this was a must-see for all Star Citizen backers. Um, it was amazing. Yeah, that um, is gift- just you put that, but I don't have it handy. I do. We're good. Oh, go ahead. Put it up. Put all this. Stuff. Uh, which one do you want first, armor or faces? Uh, armor. Okay. So, this is a long section, but really to break it down, um, as with almost everything in Star Citizen, they basically ripped out the, the basic uh, character system that was in CryEngine hmm. um, and replaced it. Uh, the the actual character system is based on the ship um, item port system. They just basically ported it over to the characters. Ship, However, the, uh, customization <coughs> screen actually still says ship customization at the top. Mm-hmm. Sure does. <laughs> um, however, um, there were quite a few changes made to the item port system for characters because it didn't really do that well with things like cloth. But uh, they've fixed all of those problems now. Um, One of the interesting things that was mentioned in this section was their use of a, uh, uh, actually, uh, technology that's included with CryEngine but no one has ever used uh, called Scale Extension. And this actually allows them to have... um, to do two things. Have... uh, Allow you to basically attach things wherever you want on the armor... And it also allows you to save a lot of performance because it essentially only um, actually uses the extensions that you are using. Um, so, you know, if you have eight grenades on there, well, it has to render out eight, eight extensions. But if you only have two, it only renders two. Um, saves on performance. Which, you know, given the level of visual quality, Star Citizen is going to need to save on performance everywhere it can. <laughs> It, imagine if you're on a place like Earth or something like that, everyone's getting all their clothes rendered, and you're only seeing like a small section of T-shirt. It's complete waste of uh, resources to have it done like that. So it's it's quite an elegant solution to do that. Yeah. Um. So we should definitely show the um. We should definitely show the the faces because this is the part that kind of blew me away. So it was funny because Three Lateral had a presentation at GDC with the faces that was um... it was fantastic. Yeah, sorry. Uh, see you later, we hamster. Bye, we hamster. <laughs> um, bye, we. Bye, we. <laughs> so Three Lateral had this presentation at GDC of their facial technology, and uh, someone mentioned it, and and it was. It was Star Citizen characters, right? And then there is there are people in Reddit going, no, no, no. This was just a tech demo. It had nothing to do with Star Citizen. It was just a company doing it. And this, then the CIG guys put it in ATV, and they're like, no, this is Star Citizen characters. This is sort of our look at what we want our character customization mm-hmm. to be. 
uh, which I thought was really funny. Well, yeah, it was in, it was like um, midway through their presentation of like, here's really cool faces and, and look, we can blend them together and whatnot. And, and then like midway through their thing, they were like, we'd like to thank Star Citizen for letting us show off the tech that, you know, we're making, blah, 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 blah. And it was funny because I was watching the archive Twitch stream and uh, I I saw Comrade Headclot in the uh, in the chat for um, the GDC live stream, and this was all of course before ATV and um, and you know it was archived or whatever. So like beforehand, he didn't even know he was just there watching the GDC live stream. And when they were like, "We'd like to thank Star Citizen," he's like, "Oh wow!" Like in chat. So I got to see like everybody's previous reactions. It was really cool. That's <laughs> awesome. Nitro? Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Can you put the link in for this um gif in in the um t- on Twitch chat, please? I think so. Thank you. It's a trap. <laughs> well, I, I so, downloaded it earlier, um, so I'll have to look for it. Okay. So, uh, Bre- Revolts is asking, "Is this type one characters?" I believe this is tier one. Yes. Uh, tier z- tier zero is even better, but they were reserved for the actors. Um. So tier one is, I believe, is your character. <clears throat> tier two will be a lot of the uh, like random NPCs. But uh, no, is it incredible level of detail on the customization? I hope they they preserve this level of detail for us when we're creating our characters. Um, I can't wait to actually see this in the game. But even the armor stuff, like it was really impressive what they were able to do. One of the things that they showed off was that uh, this like incredible montage. Did you do you have that montage, Nitro? Uh, yes, I do actually. Where they showed all the different clothes and the armors and mm-hmm. like the the cape and everything is really neat. Um, do you play some to... Survivor to it as well? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So the thing that uh, that really impressed me with this is that a lot of finished games have big problems with cloth. And it looks like they've pretty much nailed it already. Um, um, it's very clever how they've not only managed to get it so cloth um, doesn't clip through your character. In a sing- most single player games, in fact, do that. Like uh, Batman Arkham Knight had physics enabled cloth that still clips through your character. Now to achieve um, you know, to stop that happening and then apply that in an MMO is quite a technical achievement and it's not killing anyone's system in theory. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you, you know, someone mentioned in chat, uh, I should actually find it. Um, uh, and Ente Perfecte uh, mentioned that, you know, please minimize clipping, you know, uh, every MMO is a clip fiesta. This whole, like, a lot of the character stuff in this episode was um, we've fixed most of the clipping is essentially yeah. what it was about. Um, the zone culling system basically stops an underlying layer for from clipping through an overlying layer. So that, and it stops it, like, in a hard way. It doesn't, the game doesn't even render that other layer, so it can't clip through. Um, and then they showed how the cloth actually collides with the, the, uh, the physical your physical character so will never clip through either um the only real part where i can see it still being a concern is making sure that things that are attached to your armor like grenades um weapons um or whatever we end up attaching a rocket launcher (laughs) um um, making sure those things don't clip through your character or through each other Uh, but they've made made a huge improvement already one thing for me is that I'm um, not only that, but I, I'm wondering whether or not they can prevent stuff from clipping through other characters, like the cloth thing mm. from your character clipping through another um, character. But that would be really uh, interesting. But this, but this one and the moon uh, presentation, those are my two favorite um, stuff from um, this week's ATV. Yeah, yeah, there was it was a really good ATV. They did a great job this week. Um, and it was did funny because even Brian Chambers was really ATV. excited about it someone actually spotted uh the environmental coat or what could be the environmental coat oh yeah oh yeah did, did you catch that. um yeah does anybody have I was a very clever. link for that well you have a link I, for it there, the first, there shiver i don't know <laughs> i'm afraid not I, think <laughs> I thought it was very cool because if you 
had that in the color of black, you could basically recreate a Starship Troopers capital ship in game. Which would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. I, I need to watch that movie again. It's a really good movie. It's a shame they never made a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> it is a shame. Oh, I think I found it. Um, yeah, okay, I got it. You got it? Yep. Because uh, there's a GIF or an image. It's an image. Okay. I found it too. But, mm-hmm. uh... Any other it's... bits you'd like to go over? Bits and bits. Always. Always shiver. Um, oh, there's also the mention that uh, for the most part with armor, you'll be able to just have like, you know, a shirt and t- a t-shirt and pants and then the jacket and then you'll have your armor over top. But for if you want to do anything EVA, you'll have to have a um, they, they believe at least you'll have to have like a base layer that sort of seals your character against the atmosphere. Um, I just like to point and out then that your armor goes funny. That even though they were wearing the base layer, um, and they put a helmet on, there was still nothing covering the neck. Yeah, yeah. Nitro, you should send that. To, you should put that on the issue council. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I saw this neck thing. Got that, cold in space. <laughs> yeah. So I see this issue in in ATV where you're showing off stuff that isn't done yet. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, any bits that you'd like to just go over again, Eric, or mention that we no. haven't gone over? No, I, we, we should probably get to questions considering we're most of the way through the show already. <laughs> okay, then. Questions? Yes, if you have questions. Is the doc up there? The doc is not up there. The doc is put them in there. Could we have a link for the doc you as well, please, it. Eric? Yes, I will do that. <laughs> do, do, do. So... Fast car, Nitro, do you either of you two have any questions for Space Pope while we wait? I've um, already put mine in the um, in the, um question. <laughs> awesome. Oh, God. Okay. How, comfy is, <laughs> how comfy is the hat? <laughs> the uh, Space Pope hat. Yeah, the Space Pope hat. It's, uh, I'm not really sure because it's currently, uh, it's currently being refurbished. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's a vintage. Yeah. It's in the laundrette. Yeah, I have a question. So why haven't you guys acknowledged me when I'm waving at you? Oh, I was wondering what you were doing. I'm staring right at... I'm I'm the one streaming and I didn't even notice that. <laughs> um, okay. By me. There seems an NDA ending in September after all that 3D Lateral said at GDC. What do you think about 3.0 or Squadron 42, more likely 3.0 release, right after Citizen Con far from Curatus? Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Nitro. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what the NDA's, NDA was about. Um, well, so. just because the NDA ends there... Doesn't mean that that's a target. It could be an overlap. They could, you could be under the NDA for an extra two months after, simply because they predict uh, a long-term thing. So it doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily tie in with any specific release date. But CitizenCon is, um, it is certainly uh, a big event that needs to be marked in some way. So it's having something come out that's bigger. CitizenCon isn't unlikely. Agreed. Um, I would hope that 3.0 is not seven months away, uh. but, um, I don't know. I would, I mean, if anything's out, then I would hope it would be Squadron 42, but that's right. just my personal wish. <laughs> you stole my answer. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the hurricane since the QA from Revolves 84? I actually haven't read the I like QA it. yet. I read the I first know. one, and I like the answer. Well, I didn't really like I like them the way that they explain about the turret and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. um, if you notice on the Hurricane, the concept picture, they do have a, I don't want to, an indentation for like a, a large weapon that would that would could fit in that place. Uh, it seemed like, yeah. like there they, um, they, they thought about it. 
But mm-hmm. yeah. somebody actually took uh, the 3D model for it and like ripped the turret off and put a giant gun there. And uh, right. it looked really cool. I told Shiver that I would love to make like a sniper ship out of it. <laughs> that would be really cool. Um, from Brevols eighty four again. Do you like the new ship customization? Ah, uh, ah, uh, <laughs> creepy wink face. Creepy wink face. <laughs> creepy. Wi- I, I have a creepy wink. I'm oh, told. I, I thought have a creepy you were saying wink, that the so. emoji was a creepy. I was like, I've never seen a, a creepy wink emoji before. I mean, in fairness, I mean, I kind of feel that all winks are creepy because it's like, wh- why do you feel the need to wink at me? And then also this extra need to type that you wink at me. Never mind. Carry on. No, I really like the, ship, the, the new ship yeah, character customization. customization. Uh, I really like it because I'm the kind of person that like customization is my favorite thing of all time. And a lot of games sell me on whether or not I can customize anything. Um, so the moment I was like, you mean I can take this part of the armor that I really like and the other part of this armor that I really like and put them on my character to make an armor that I really, really like. It, that's really exciting. and I'm happy about it. Yeah, they're say, they're saying in chat, you meant customiza- character customization versus ship customization. I can't wait to put more armor on my ship. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep <laughs> welding bits of steel to it. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah. Um, how do you think Vandal would smell on the inside? Idea stolen from Wikipedia, but asked by Brevols84. I don't know. I don't- they smell I, bad on the outside and, and yeah, I was gonna say I, I have a feeling bad. that I, I, yeah. I think it would be shocking that they would smell like lilacs. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine uh, like going on a, a raid and killing a bunch of vandal and their like dead carcasses are laying every everywhere and you're like, oh, lavender. Well, hang on, isn't it? What didn't they do the most bizarre add-on for the rift? The <laughs> smell I think it? it was for South Park. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. I can't. Well, can you imagine like going through like tearing through some band jewels and it'll be like that um that um uh, I can't I can't think of the name, but when Anakin is killing the younglings, instead of instead of seeing all the brutality, he's going to see flowers and stuff going all around him. Not the like, younglings. Uh, no, in uh, in Call of Duty they said, do that too. There's a there's a violence um option in the thing. That like when you shoot people and there's blood everywhere, it changes it to paintballs. So like it's just like different colored <laughs> splatters everywhere. Okay, I remember the Mega Drive's form of censorship that just made the blood gray. <laughs> it worked. Uh, Nakara, in the past several months, your view on potential 3.0. PTR, I believe I mean PTU, was a pessimistic view for the end of 2017. Last week, you changed to Mayish. My question is, just what made you change your mind from Dana? What made um, you change your mind? I Honestly, the, the end of 2017 thing was always just me being... I was... Let's say I was not thrilled at the end of, uh, <laughs> at the end of 2016. <laughs> um, Why wasn't you thrilled? No, I'm kidding. No... I think so. Two point six point two is going to be out by the end of March. Um, so here's what I say: if there's a two point seven, which they have yet to officially confirm, but the rumors are out there. Um, if there's a two point seven, I think that would probably come April or m- early May, somewhere in that range. Um, if there's if they go straight to 3.0, I think it's May or June. But um, it's really, it's really hard to tell. Obviously, with CIG, it it uh, every time you guess, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like I expected 2.6.2 to have a longer lag time. Like, but it's going to be yeah. by the end of next week. It's going to be out to Eva Cotti. Um It's you know, uh, to win it, not play the game. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, um, we don't really have that choice, though. We gotta we gotta speculate sometimes, right? <laughs> um, so what I was talking about with Shiver this week is I think that they might do a 2.7 patch that introduces a lot of the features from 3.0 into the existing Crusader map. So 
put in the planetary, put in Selen and and Damar and Yella, um, allow you to land on them. You know, put that system in, put the cargo system in for the existing you know area that is in the Crusader map. Um, put in the shopping system and the economy system and the AI, and it just would give them a test bed. Um, before they have to do it on a s- huge solar system yeah. scale, um, I think I think if they do 2.7, that's what it will be. I think it will be a lot of the features from 3.0 slid forward to 2.7 so that they can test them on a smaller scale. Now, will it happen? I don't know, but um, I'm what I'm I'm actually really excited for about a month from now because about a month from now we'll be getting our next production schedule report. And I don't think it's going to be 2.6.3. I think it's going to be the next major patch, whether it's 3.0 or 2.7. Anyway, I've talked about that enough. <laughs> I think it's going to be 2.7 and the major feature will be hammocks. Oh, of course. <laughs> Physics sure. grid enabled hammocks. Yeah. I mean, everyone needs hammocks. People had no clue um, what you're talking about. <laughs> how else do you expect to how relax ha- in the engine room? Hmm. I mean, how hard do you think? Oh, go on. I mean, it's it's what Kaylee did. It's the perfect solution. I know. Like, I I plan on being a a, a Kaylee like character in the thing in the final. Oh, by the way, I have to mention um, the Deadpool teaser that just or Deadpool two I, teaser that just came out. I just watched. Um, that. In the background of that, the shop the shop's window is just plastered with Firefly posters. Yeah. Oh, really, I didn't notice that. I, yes. that. I just really enjoyed um, the shut up, Stanley. <laughs> how hard do you think it is to retro design a ship so that it appears to be a predecessor to the current lineup from Breeballs 84 oh, I'm, I'm sorry restate um, that uh, how hard do you think it is to retro design a ship so that it appears to be a predecessor to the current lineup oh okay that hard at all I mean well probably harder to make a newer version than it is to make an older version from the yeah. current ship I mean, yeah. you see it a lot in, um, in Star Wars, and like you have a predecessor to the Star Destroyer, stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm not a designer, obviously, but that, that's my feeling. Yeah, because like in real life, when you have a new car come out, it's because, oh, we discovered this new technology that allows us to do this differently. Whereas in a video game, you're like, well, it has to look prettier than the last one, but we made the last one look as pretty as we could possibly make it. So <laughs> how, how do we make this one prettier? So it's like a very weird situation when you try and do something like that in a video game. And I, I do fully expect them to do it. Um, one of the things I'm actually really looking, looking forward to is finding like some of the, the historical ships from star citizen scattered around. Uh, like for, the Zeus. Uh, I'm, I've always used it as the example, but yeah, the Zeus, um, but even like the um, oh, there was a ship I can't remember its name now that was the predecessor to the Aurora um, that RSI made, and um, so even like that ship or some of the original Origin ships. But my um, thing is, oh, go ahead. No, good. Okay. Let's just my other thing is that they have so many concepts for each specific ship, they could just pick one and say, "Oh, that's the predecessor." That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So they Absolutely. already have the design. They don't need to do any of the work. I don't think. Man, I would love to see them do that original uh, that original Endeavor uh, concept that was just looked ridiculous. It would be great. <laughs> Giant dish on it. And the- oh yeah. <laughs> I'm actually really I really like the Endeavor's current design. I'm that was actually yeah. one of the reasons why I bought one. Um, <laughs> oh, look at me! I have an Endeavor. I kind of forget I do sometimes. Uh- it's really weird. Will Shiva and Nakara forget React ever again from the Thos card? <laughs> no. I I already did. Not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, you said React, and I was like, I know that's a reference to something, but I don't remember what for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember. How was the um, hurricane sale compared to other concept sales from Thoscout? Oh, that's a very good question. I will go take a look. Mm. Um so can we move on while I go look? Okay, well, while you maths, uh, please tell me how I can get intro song from Progestinus, Progest, from Proj. The uh, intro song is the music from uh, the Big Guns of the UEE trailer uh, on the Star Citizen channel. 
what ship do you expect for new concept sale from mm. Progenesis? 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 I'm really Progenesis, whatever. I'm really enjoying that they're doing more Dave. angel ships. Um, like, because forever, <laughs> yeah, forever we were like, it's like, oh, a new Aegis ship. Yay. Another Aegis fighter that looks kind of like the last one, but it's like bigger and has a few more turrets. And so it's, it's kind of uh, awesome that we get Anvil ones, especially since Anvil seems to, like, while they have their own design language, their ships are very different. You know, the, the Carrick is, uh, the Carrick is this huge, like, um, I don't know how to describe the, the shape of it. Um, you know, just, I don't know. But uh, then the, you have the Terrapin that's just kind of big and tanky, and it's got a giant round gl- uh, dome-like cockpit. And uh, and like four VTOL thrusters, and then you have the um, Hurricane, which for some reason I forgot the name of. That while it does take design cues from other Anvil ships, it's still very unique looking. Um, like I would think it was. But, Go ahead. If you saw it in a distance, you'd be like, "I know that manufacturer." You would know, right? What kind of you'd know that's a warship coming, you would know the difference between right. that and Anvil and um, not uh, Aegis and Origin and Drake. I'd like to see some more Origin ships, so yeah, more yeah. Origin well, ships. They're on the, they're on the 800. I, I would expect it's the 800, the, yeah, no, it's 600. The, it's a 600. Mm. 600 um, sorry, I would Oops. expect to see the Origin 600 soon since it was on their list. Um, what's that supposed to be? And there again? aren't many left, like. Like roll and size. We um, haven't heard gonna, any official word. So I'll be, I'll be screwed either way. But um, <laughs> they, they, talk about, they, they talk about you know working on on, on new ships that they can't that they can't discuss. So that's what they said. We're working on ships that we can't discuss yet. So we should be expecting more concept ships somewhere down the line. Yeah. Um, you know. but um, now the question of sort of how. Uh, how the concept sale is going? Eh, it's pretty good. It's roughly on the order of the prospector concept sale. Um, so bottom bit's gonna looks like it's gonna end around a million dollars, maybe one point one, one point two, somewhere in that range. Okay. Do you feel that there is a too high focus on combat in Star Citizen? Would you like to see more alternative spaceships like miners, cargo carriers, etc., from future eight faced snowflake? Well, yes. <laughs> go ahead uh but the thing is is like um well the whole thing where there isn't much else to do in the game at the moment because they're still implementing more stuff so yeah go ahead yeah put the prospector in the game now and have fun flying it and that's it I'm like <laughs> sure because like i mean even though the freelancers in there i don't see many people flying around it to do missions and stuff because while well, it is a fun ship to fly around in, it's really cool and it's like it's like my own little Millennium Falcon or whatever. It's it's still like I'm going to go grab a Big Benny uh, vending machine maybe and take it somewhere. There isn't really much to do in it other than goof around. Can't you just get a date like a normal person? Yeah. <laughs> I've tried that. <laughs> That's what the Mustang Vader is for. The bank thing. <laughs> well, to answer the question, I, I think, uh, yes, there is, to directly answer the question, but I also understand that the reason for that is Squadron 42. That is the priority at the moment. Squadron 42 isn't going to be mining, cargo carrying. You're a member of the Navy, thus you're going to be combating. So that's why currently... Combat is getting the big focus. The mm-hmm. flight model is getting the big focus because that's got to be at a stage where they are happy enough to release Squadron Forty Two in. But, but to directly answer the question, yeah, I'd love to see some more alternative spaceships, like more than one starting miner, more than one intermediary miner, more than one uh, exploration capital class ship. I'd love that. But could you imagine an Origin class uh, large exploration capital ship? Ooh. Imagine the yes, amount of hot tubs that would have. Like 64. Brilliant. At least. Yeah. At least. Yeah, uh, yeah keep my questions answer. coming. Um, my answer is going to be a so, bit. Um, okay. I just wanted to mention the Doom Centurion who just joined us. Um, 
And he said, I sincerely hope that the first half of this show is gushing over the latest ATV because, wow, uh, our first 50 minutes of the show were all about ATV. You're so not going to be disappointed. <laughs> no, my answer is, they get two more, um, you know, releases like 3.1, 3.2. I expect to have more concept ships come out. Um, what the concept ships, how many of them will tie into the specific. Um, Passage that I believe. I have no way of knowing, but that's my expectation. Okay. Uh, there are no more questions. Why, why are there no more questions? Ask questions. Either of you two got questions. No, but questions? I, I'd love to talk more about like the whole different design philosophy of different manufacturers. Like, because we talked about how Anvil has a bunch of variety in their ships, but I, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of funny that. I feel like on a radar, like if, if radars have like little outlines of the ship shape um, on it and like you're bad at judging size and scale of the ship on the radar, you could probably easy, easily misjudge a group of uh, a group of vanguards as a group of sabers and be like, oh, well, it's just five sabers. And then all of a sudden five <laughs> vanguards show up and you get torpedoes shoved places. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was interesting Places. how on on a, on an item port demonstration for the armor, they had like eleven um, ports for one of the armors, and I was thinking they're just missing two people who <laughs> follow the base for <laughs> Well, I did think it's um, one of the reasons I, lo I love Misk ships. They have that that mm. like very industrial look. Yeah. Um, and I, I do actually. I think the unity of the Misk line is really cool. Like they all. Are like you look at that ship, you're like, oh, well, it's Misk. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can just it's see a, it from the Misk laser. Kind of look different to me though. I, I would not place that as um as Misk. I well, can... it's also a racing ship as opposed to yeah. like yeah. like uh, like in big industrial ships. I really um, actually don't like the Razor, and I know I'm gonna probably get a lot of flack for that. I don't. No, well, you know, a lot of have, a lot of people say that. that. I, it's all right. I don't like it very much, but what was it? I See, was kind of. I really like it. I was kind of hoping that they would have done, um, like you know those those fifties racers that look kind of like a teardrop, like very round in the front and and like kind of old school. Because to me, that's Misk's aesthetic. Is like Fast that. tub with wheels. Uh, well, yeah, not necessarily, but like you know, with Mis Misk's aesthetic, you know, they're very World War Two y, right? Um, and so when they were like, oh, it's a racing ship, I'm like, oh, so maybe like a, a 50s racer style that is very different and uh, and maybe not as aerodynamic looking as some of the other ones. And then they're like, no, it's a Formula One car with wings. I'm like, oh, oh. I like that. I just thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, uh, we've got some so, questions in, so we'll take these questions. Go on, just, fast well, you Just wait until they release the mini salvager called the Clipper. Hmm. <laughs> um, what new ship would you like to see from Consolidated Outlands uh, from Dana? Consolidated Outlands, not Illuminati. Um, <laughs> similarly to similarly to what I mentioned before, um, I believe from what I remember that they were leaning towards a constellation-sized ship for Consolidated Outland first. However. This is a really interesting one because they had originally said that, Constella that Consolidated Outland wouldn't have any new ships mm -hmm. until the game was out. And the reason for that is that it, it for it's a brand new company, right? Mm -hmm. Literally, the company is supposed to be launching their first ship. It's almost like Tesla with the, 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 road, the Roadster. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it takes a while to actually build up enough revenue and sales and everything to actually launch another ship. Yeah, they'll be um, coming out with their Model X next. Yeah. <laughs> um Model T. No wait, that's don't that's over two. <laughs> <laughs> so um I'm I'm wondering if they're gonna stick to that or if they're going to if we are going to actually see another ship from Consolidated Outland soon. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I mean I don't really know enough about the Consolidated Outland as a company or the ship style to really have a guess or I mean, I would like to see more ship from them. But I'm not sure which ship or what kind of um, role I would like to see that, that they them to put out. 
have they put much law out behind the company? Yes. Um, Do we know yeah. the, the background of it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to read that one day. No, um, it's well it's well pro- established. Progesinesis. Proch, Dave, uh, what do you think about the new happy hour and what more do you expect from the new format? I didn't watch it, but I'm intrigued by the thumbnail of it because it looks like they're playing in MS Paint. I wasn't quite sure what it was. (laughs) Donkey Kong. How was it? It was um, uh, Chris Roberts' Chris story, I think they yeah, called it. basically, it was Just another episode of uh, it's basically basically another episode of RSA Museum. Okay. Yeah. The the two um, I will didn't watch, watch it. is Chris made games in the UK. Now he makes games in the US. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, um, I do. I, I like the format, and I do uh, expect to see lots of good things out of it. They've done a really good job, and I know a lot of people were skeptical at the beginning. So hats off. I'm getting a little. All right. A little confused, but not okay. Can't say that word, but you know what I mean. I'm a little confused by the different. They're doing different things every other week. Like right, I thought faster. it was just going to be a streamer, and then have like some gameplay, and mm-hmm. but jumping around that they went from doing that to creating a creature, and I like that word. Yeah. And then they did the. They, then they fulfilled the 19 million with, um dress goal with the museum, and you know they had to do that, so that's okay. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm, I'm I want to see a little more consistency. Like, if they just do the creation stuff, or some kind of creation stuff, and the streamer stuff, I yeah, think be okay. Yeah, I was just about to say, I really like the creature stuff, but I also like the fact that they're like, here's some really cool people from our community that we want to hang out with for an hour. So, yeah. like a mix of that somehow. All right. Yeah, I'm waiting for them Let, to invite me on. Come on. <laughs> let's, um... Just do these last three very quickly. I'll go. I'll go one each for all of you. Perfect. All right. Starfarer gas mining in 3.0 when the prospect of mineral mining is very close to completion from Ruderen Nakara. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, what do you think will the out? How do you think the 300i will look after its rework from Ruderen Fastcar? Awesome. I said just awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay, this is fast. I like well, that. And I, 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 finally, I like, I like oh, where the 300i look already. So you know, I think I think it'll be. Three hundred i was my very first ever ship. It's it's it's, it's now a gladiator. Uh, how many ships do you guess there is when the game is launched from Triangularity? All right, Triangularity. That would be you, Nitro. Yes. How many <laughs> how many ships do you guess there is when the game is launched? If you don't say forty two, you're I, out. No, I was going to say forty two, but I wanted to. I, well, oh, yes. I I, we're like already it. over hundred, so yeah, <laughs> forty two hundred. Okay, there you go, forty two hundred. There we go. Folks. They have a long way to go. <laughs> All right, one point. Okay, uh, Nakara, I believe you have an announcement as a total segue from anything Star Citizen related that you'd like to discuss uh yeah before we go um so uh, this afternoon actually right after the show i am uh going to get rid of all of this my ridiculously can i, long can I have the trimmings uh, can no I, can i have the headphones um, oh. they're really nice no i'm not getting rid of the headphones just the hair how about the mic um, can I have the mic no you can't have the mic Fast card, <laughs> but um, I uh, this afternoon I'll be shaving my head in support of Kids Cancer Care of Alberta. Um, so if anybody feels like sponsoring me, um, this is the link. And yes, the beard too. Blue's eye. Oh, zero, that's going to be weird. Um, He's done it before. As but I did it. I did it last. That. I did it last year. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm used uh, to seeing hair on your head. <laughs> it's gonna be bald. It's gonna be bald. Yeah, it's gonna be weird. You're gonna look like a baby man. A baby man. I actually have pictures of me from last year. I, I do look a fair bit like that. Actually, I kind of look like Shrek. Actually, it's kind of funny because I've seen pictures of him when he was a baby, and he actually had a beard. Back then. <laughs> so. Well, I'm yeah, not surprised. Not, not gonna work. Battery. I'll bring up um, in the picture. He was fighting a moose too. 
well, he was riding a moose. Well, yeah, after <laughs> Fast Cup. What? Fast Cup. Community diplomat for Star Citizen. <laughs> Where can we find you? You have a uh, Twitter, I believe. Don't I have you? a Twitter. Um, fast, fast underscore cart. Um, also on Twitch. Well, I'll just say, say hi to Nathan. Go to, go to my profile. Uh, can you also post maybe- on... Um- I'll give you a thing. There you go. No, oh, I'm already mod. <laughs> but I don't, I don't have a handy. That's what I was going to say. Um, I'll do it right now. Da, 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 for, Why do I like to my, be a mod? But, but I am also have maintained a package chart for the Star Citizen packages. And um, also, remember the, um, the sale for the hurricane is ending on the 6th, which is mon- um, Monday. Well, Monday. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if you haven't gotten one, you can expect one. At least you can try to get some tokens, but they're, they're not cheap because it's an odd price. So, and let me bring up my um, my chart. I still can't believe uh, that my anvil hurric- or my anvil terrapin costs more than the hurricane. <laughs> they're weird. They'd be a good pair, though. They would. They would be a great pair. It, well, I mean, people are great pairing up. People are noting them as the uh, the spear and the shield, which was a very yep. interesting analogy. I thought it was really cool. But they're spaceships, not a spear and a shield. Nitro, yeah. Taipat, inventor of the Taipat maneuver. Yeah. Where can we find you? Um, in my room. I know. Don't, I, don't. I, I, <laughs> I'll kick uh, your ass. <laughs> you can try. No, I um, I'm over on the base.sc. Uh, I do uh, a few shows over there. Um, or a couple of them with Mr. Shiver Bathory himself. But uh, this morning I had one that I do every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, 4 p.m. UTC, and then of course you know uh, postcards from the Event Horizon, and then. We do the faux Friday night show now uh, on the first Friday of the month. Um, and uh, other than that, you can find me on Twitter at Nitro Typat, and that's a lot of fun. Hmm. I'm also on Thursday, on Tuesdays, um, eight, uh, 1800 Eastern, 2200 UTC on Code Both uh, Nitro and Fastcart, you can find out more about their respective shows on the base at the base.se slash schedule or just in general base.sc uh nakara hello where could we find you around the star citizen community well of course you can find me and you at relay.sc um and uh reddit and every wednesday on postcards or most wednesdays on postcards and on the Friday, full Friday night show, um, which was already mentioned, is the first Friday of each month. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm all over the place. Also on the, the Relay Discord, which you can reach by going down below. And uh, yeah, no, I said it. <laughs> uh, no, I did want, uh, of course, in my, my, my habit, I am going to answer one of the questions is it from chat. Um, Miami BAT asked uh, in the Entropia universe there are personal houses to rent um, even apartments and skyscrapers etc etc will we have this in Star Citizen Um, it's been mentioned many times I think it's almost guaranteed I mean we already have the uh, the million mile mm, with the million mile high club Um, so yeah personal residences and stuff. I mean, you're already going to have personal hangers. It's almost guaranteed to happen. Um, <clears throat> especially with the modular building system that they're making um, for outposts. And they're already, uh, Chris has already talked about players actually building up bases on, um, on asteroids and moons and planets. So That's absolutely. No yeah. Sure it is. It just That's has a really asteroid. big, it just has a really big gun on it. <laughs> Oh, and really quick PSA. Th- if you haven't changed the password, you have used Cloudflare services. Most people do change the password. And use uh, TFA to um, authentication if you can. Don't forget to change your underwear at least once every two weeks. You can extend the wear time by just turning them inside out. Brilliant <laughs> trick. 
I've heard no that worries. brushing your teeth is also good. <laughs> that's true. That is true. I, I can confirm that's <laughs> this is, true. <laughs> this is quality advice from Relay. <laughs> Showers are optional. Um, so in I case mention, you don't know, oh, go on. Um, our illustrious Eris is actually back this week. Um, yeah. He defeated the Moose, and uh, and that was a long uh, battle. He was a little. It was a very long battle. He's a little roughed up by it, so he's currently at a bachelor party for some reason. Um, so <laughs> enjoy, Harris, and hopefully he'll be back soon on this show. Yep. Um, in case you don't know, some of the other things that we do around here. If if you don't want to sit through this entire podcast just to listen to us discussing the news, we do a uh, relay replay, which is as condensed a version as we can do of just the news which gets played um, over on the base.sc in the regular rotation and is available standalone at the uh, relay.sc um, in addition to that you know obviously usual transcripts will be coming out uh, directed by the fantastic Canadian syrup and team uh, what else we've got relay fiction Wednesday what's coming on with uh, any any anything coming out from your team this week Eric? Um, yeah, well, I mean, maybe not this week. We have um, we have a few articles in the pipeline that are uh, that are being worked on. Um, also, a lot of ideas that are floated around. CIG's really helped with this because we've actually started to get a better flow of information the past couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, I expect to see some more articles coming out soon, and I'll probably be showing up in fiction as well, so watch for me there. Right. Also, um, for anyone who doesn't know, we also have a news section on Relay now, so go Relay check it out every news? once in a while. Yes, we do. Um, so go check it out every once in a while. Um, hopefully we'll eventually get that moved to our front page. But, and the, uh, monthly push, yeah. the monthly reports will be coming out soon, and you guys will be taking, care, taking a yep. TLDR of that oh, too, yeah. right? Next, next uh, Friday it should be out. That should be okay. that should be a uh, a good sprint. Let's try and get that out. Well, that has been a relay station for this week. Uh, next week, hopefully, fingers crossed, Eris should be back, and you won't have to put up with the uh, budgety versions. Hey, uh, thank you again for joining us. I know, I know. <laughs> thank you again for joining us. Uh, we will hopefully see you next week and see you in the verse. <laughs>